Well, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as you would have guessed from the thumbnail and the title, we have a demo tractor here. Eagle eyed viewers will have noticed I just finished the last video before this one coming out. Sat in the same place, but yeah, here we are with a Case 145 Maxim. It's on demo to us from James Price Tractors. They are our local case dealer. I think they've got branches at South Moulton, Tiverton, and I think there's another one I forget. Perhaps it is just Tiverton and South Moulton. They are. But uh, yeah, they've dropped this in the yard for a couple of days for us to have a go with. It's a four cylinder 145. Um, boosting to 175 horsepowers. I've made the wheels muddy dropping these cattle about. Um, but yeah, quite a tall tractor. I think he's on bigger wheels than our um, 155, but I'd have to check when we get back in 70s. Well, it might be 70s. Um, yeah, there's the back end. Nothing too fancy. We've got uh, three spools, one of them taken up by the hitch down there. Uh, top link. It's got air brakes. All new tractors, I think, come with air brakes now, uh, especially if they're 50k, which this one is. It's free flow return, hydraulic brakes as well. Um, yeah, quite a nicely laid out back end. It's not cluttered at all. Got the big double mirrors like those, twin beacons. There it is from the front. Looks good in the sun. We will have to give it a wash now before it goes back. This one's loader ready. It come with the loader. Um, but we've had it taken off just because we're not going to be using it. In the cab, uh, this is all very nice. There's no dash behind here anymore. If I pull the steering wheel down, so there's no none of your dash is there anymore. That in there, it's just a fridge. Keep your sandwiches cold and your drink or whatever. Everything is either on this screen or on this pillar. This looks after all your um, things like your handbrake and if you've got four wheel drive in. Also, there's a warning light, but I'm not sure what that's for. Um, your gears are on here along with your speed. The speed's also on the screen here. You can set this up however you want to. Um, but yeah, everything that you need to see at a glance is either there or there. You've got the uh, the case multi-controller. So this has got your hand throttle on it, as well as forward and backwards, up and down your gears. It's got spools that you can uh, link via the screen to it, and also up and down on your linkage. You've got a scroll wheel for setting speeds and various things. Also got your headland management button on there. Um, it's all very tidy. Three electric spools. It's also got the multi-controller here for the um, loader. If that was on, I think you've got your forward and back shuttle on there. I think that's it's quite a handy little thing. It sits quite nice in the palm. All your buttons down here for like engine revs, reverse your fan. That's good if it's got it on it. I'm not sure it has. If you can reverse your fan, that would be good. Four-wheel drive, diff lock, auto PTO, um, spool functions. These does your link arms on here, but again, you can do that on that one if you want to. How aggressive you, uh, you're you pulling off with your uh, clutch. It's on there. PTO button. You've got your PTO speeds back here on this manual lever. That's quite good. You know where you are with that. Just 540, neutral, eco, or 1000. Uh, we'll leave it in neutral because we're not gonna be using it at the moment. I think you've got draft control under there. It's good. Oil flow as well. Moving up onto the top here, you've got your radio. Um, climate control settings, all your lights. Let's put our beacons on because we're going on the road. That'll be fun. Uh, is that a battery isolator on there? Is that trailer braking? What does that do? Oh, that just tests you the trailer brakes, I see. I've never seen that before, that's quite cool. Got a little mirror here so you can see when you're hooking up. You've got your three pin plug there. Um, is that a button for your PTO so it doesn't stop if you get out of the cab if you're doing something like um, mixing up feed. Got the handle there for the uh, release the pin on the pickup hitch. One thing I do like is the seat. The seat is brilliant. It's also got this wrap round headpiece. So if you're doing something when you're working behind you, you can sit there with your arm over here, nice and comfortable, see what's going on behind. Uh, and then when you're on the road, just back in there. Nice and comfy. Passenger seat in case and also New Holland's has always been very good. You've got a full size back rest, which is nice. That does fold down if you want the cup holder storage or any of these, anything like that. There's a massive great big pocket here, look, for the likes of your bag, for all the YouTubers out there. Um, comes in very handy. Yeah, I, I would take you through the screen, but I don't really understand it, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I'm sure I've had a few days with it, I would. This one hasn't got Isobus, it's Isobus ready, but I don't think the terminal is on the back to plug anything into. 
Uh, I'm sure you can get um, guidance on them as well, whether you need another screen or just a software update. It knows how much area you've worked here. You can um, set up implements here and swath widths and whatever, so you can know how much area you've used and how much fuel you've used, etc. And uh, yeah, we got it for a couple of days. We've been ferrying around the bulls with it this morning just because it was here to have a go with. Uh, and so we'll have a go with it. Got an exhaust brake, which I have never had any experience of. Um, let me know what you think of those in the comments. Are they good, bad, indifferent? I found something metal to stick my camera to. I think it's where the blind dispense is from, but uh, let's get ourselves on the road and home here. Right, so very similar to the gearbox in the John Deere that we've got whereby you've got three ranges of eight gears. You've got A, B, and C, uh, one through eight. Um, there's a button on the back of the multi-controller down here that you just have to press if you want to change between ranges. Other than that, you just press up and down to go through them. Um, I'm not sure whether there's an automatic setting for your gears. Um, i have to find that out. So yeah, this is a four-cylinder. 50k model of the 145. It is um, definitely not low on torque, which you might think the four cylinder would be. I know we were only dragging two bolts in the box behind us, but uh, on the hills up to where we are now, definitely didn't worry about it. Didn't know it was in there. It's got self cancelling indicators, which are quite nice. So once you get back to a uh, middle of your steering wheel will turn themselves off. We are quite good as farmers at um, leaving our indicators on so everyone else is disgusted it's following us. One thing this tractor's also come with which is quite nice you won't be able to see probably from the video but there's a um, an arm here in this window or the door that you don't tend to use in the tractor with mounts set on it already for um, various screens if you had one for like a drill or fertilizer spinner or sprayer or whatever there's an arm here with you can get like universal mounts to go on it. Everything's already set up. There's a RAM mount here for a phone. Um, just to get the piece of bar, just as a comparison, in the 155 that goes from the pillar uh, to the ceiling is something ridiculous like £110. So that's quite nice that they put that in there already. It's not metal, which I thought it would be. That's where I was going to set the camera up. But um, at least it's there if you want to put your screens on which uh, a lot of people do these days. So I'm not sure what causes the boost to kick in, but I can see on my pillar here that um, I've currently got a power boost happening. I can definitely feel pulling up these hills. As I say, 50k box, it tops out somewhere around 54, 53 and a half. Um, so plenty of speed for the road. Sort of the driver's view that you're getting now. This lane that I'm on is horrendously rough, so I apologise for any bumps or whatever. Yeah, I don't really want to compare it to the John Deere, because they're obviously different tractors, one's a six cylinder, this is a four cylinder. Um, but that is the power of tractor that this is sort of comparable to. Um, and what you gain with having a four cylinder engine is obviously a much shorter bonnet. I wouldn't call this a snoop nose bonnet, but uh, hopefully you can see from the picture that um, definitely a fair bit shorter than what the John Deere would be. I did think the turning circle would be better, getting in and out of the fields we were in with the uh, cattle box earlier. Um, I thought the turning circle was yeah, definitely bigger than I expected it would be, especially when I looked at the full bar. Again, that's probably something that you just expect now from a four-cylinder tractor is the ability for it to turn on itself. But, um, I'm not saying it was bad, it had a good turning circle, I just expected it to have a slightly tighter one. Currently doing 53k, cruising along nicely. The seat is very, very comfortable to be in. Um, it took a bit of setting up this morning to get it where I wanted it. Uh, I couldn't seem to raise it up. John managed to sort it out in the end, but I was sat on the floor first thing this morning. Um, which wasn't ideal, but we got it. Got it where I wanted it now. One thing that Craig mentioned earlier, which is actually a very good point, is um, it's, it's set up for having a load on it at the moment. So uh, seeing as we've taken it off, we probably should have taken some air out the tyres. It's only here for a couple of days, and then it's going back onto the loader. Um, so we haven't done that, but 
if you were taking the loader off for any amount of time, you would uh, let, some, let some air out your front tyres just to make it a little bit softer again. I'm not sure whether it's got front suspension. Um, it looks like it has from the pipework on the front and also there's a button here that sort of identifies the front suspension. I'm sort of starting to get comfier with this joystick here now on the way home as well. Earlier on I kept pressing the uh, link arms up and down button and trying to change gears. Um, so also I've just done a little experiment driving it not on the foot throttle but on this hand throttle. So you just keep pushing the joystick forward a bit like you would on a forager something like that. And then obviously you've got your buttons you can still go up and down your gears if you want to slow down you just pull it back towards you. If you want to cruise along can, or if you want to you can put it right back and go back to your foot throttle. I don't know if that's what they're designed to do, people to drive them like that on the road, or whether that is very much the field mode, but um, yeah I'm sure you'd soon get used to doing that if that's the way you wanted to do it. Another nice touch that I've just realised, I just met the postman on the lane here um, and he wanted to go in about where I was so I stopped in a little bit of a hurry and it's nice to see that as you stop the tractor changes down your gears so that if you then pull away sharply you're not trying to pull away in a gear where you're going to stall. Um, you'd expect it to do that, but it's just nice to see that they, that they do. Um, yeah, another nice little feature. Home sweet home. Oh, this box needs washing out. I think Craig might be going off rolling with this tractor this afternoon or something. Try and get as much use of it as we can whilst we've got it. Um, I think they said we're allowed to put 25 hours on it. Considering we've only got it for two days, we'll be going some. I'll park it next to the John Deere here, look. Handbrake on. Hear the electric handbrake. Uh, key off. Oh, lights off. Right, so there's the John Deere. There's the case. It's obviously a bit shorter. Not by a lot, actually. It's got a, as much of a presence about it as the John Deere S. Uh, and I tell a lie, they're actually on the same size wheels. Um, perhaps they just look bigger because they're newer. But yeah, I've made it dirty anyway. Got some dirty for Craig to have a go rolling in. I've got to head off in this one this afternoon with the first spreader. Get a bit of fertilizer out. John's just washing out the pot because it is an absolute state in there. there. Here's the track from the outside. I know you saw it a little bit earlier. So I thought I'd just take you around it a little bit. I like the front grille, they're a very aggressive looking tractor. Um, very, very nice. There's loads of space in here to get to washing around all this gubbins, which there's not always on a lot of other tractors. It's got obviously our blue, boo hiss, boo hiss. Um, it's got a little toolbox that comes with it. It's quite handy, although in my experience with tractor toolboxes, they are never big enough. Uh, got a load of tools in there, some winged ones, and there's also the replacement shaft if you want a thousand speed. So that's good. Wants a little lock on there. Um, steps are really good, really like the steps, good quality strong metal steps. That's a nice little touch there, isn't it? But nice big high fenders, you can get all in under there again to wash. Um, plenty of space in here to wash as well. I don't know why I always think about washing stuff, probably because I spend half the time washing stuff. But yeah, uh, this is all laid out quite nice. Craig said this is having to be redesigned because obviously you can't have an uh, air line right behind your top lane, you can never get your line in properly. But, um, whether that needs shifting to the side one way or the other, I don't know. And uh, why they didn't carry on these spools, probably here, I don't quite understand. It was nice and all in one big row, but it is what it is. It works how it does, so that's good. I think these are carriers for linkage balls, um, which is good. Obviously, the draw bar's on there as well, which is handy for changing, being right next door. There's the brackets for the loader. Again, because it's come from factory, all plumbed into that little joystick, which is nice. I think it's got a quick fit. Looks like it's got a quick fit um, on it. We'll go and have a look at the loader in a sec. Yeah, there it is, 145 Case Maxim. That's James Price, if you want to get hold of him at all. This is nice. This is nice and neat and tidy behind that pillar. You can't see that because of that dashboard being in the way anyway. Um, I know especially on the Fergie, some of the big exhausts, they really do take up a lot of space. Good set of steps here, I guess there's a 
pull out for the battery. Yep, yeah, there we are. If you need to get in there at all. I guess that's a fuse box at the top there as well. But the battery being accessible is good. Um, tucks in quite nice with those steps there, doesn't it? And yeah, twin beacon as we said earlier. Got your linkage and your first spool and also your PTO on the back. It's just nice. I know I've only driven it on the road, but it was um, you know, it was nice enough experience driving it. I wouldn't complain about having to drive it again. Um, I think Craig's planning to get out and do some field work with it, um, possibly tomorrow, so we'll get to see it in, uh, in the field as well. Just before we go, I'll go and show you the loader. Right, here is the loader it come with. Um, looks like it's got an adaptive plate as well for something. Um, I don't know whether that's to help whoever it's going to next. Uh, but anyway, here's the loader. So it's an L4223. No idea what that means. Um, someone I'm sure in the comments will let us know. Uh, I'm not sure what loaders Case IH use. Normally they're with either like a Trima or a, one of the branded loaders um, and they put their own colours on them. But like I say, I have no idea. But um, looks nice enough. It's got the legs for taking it off. You've got to put a bucket on nearly everything to take them off these days. And there it is, the quick quick hitch. All nice and neat one. One place I remember the load of tractors I used to work with to try and get each pipe on individually and it was a nightmare. But uh, yeah, got a little uh, holder there for the pipes, all down inside the body. Looks proper nice. Quickie, no it's a quickie bucket. I wonder if it's a quickie loader then, it's a quickie bucket. But uh, anyway, there it is. So yeah, that's the case tractor we got on demo. Um, I don't know whether we'll get to see more of it in the field tomorrow, depends what we're up to. I think I'm going first spreading. Craig was going to head off and do some work with it. If you want to know any more about them, get in contact with Prices. Again, I put, their, uh, put all their names down in the description and their contact numbers, but that is them if you want to pause the screen and get their numbers. I'm sure they'll let anyone have a demo that's close to them if they want one. But if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Head down to the description for all my other social links and for James Price uh, and everything else. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in another video very soon. Cheerio.